Hey YouTubers. All right, we're we're going to be documenting a, a replication from a YouTube user with the name of Mr. Preva. And uh, also, this is in relationship to the concepts and ideas of uh, Floyd Sweet, uh, or also known as Sparky. Uh, he's the guy who had an apparatus where you could put in a few milliwatts of power. And he got out of it something like, you know, uh, thousands of kilowatts. <laughs> the efficiency was like over a million percent. And uh, he also had conditioning of magnets, which uh, I think that was just a ruse to cover up some basic simple operations. Um, also, uh, a guy by the name of HYIQ or high IQ uh, he's a YouTube user and I believe he just came out with his website above unity.com um, go check that out if you want um, and he picked up on the concepts of Floyd's uh, suite uh, using opposing magnetic fields to uh, generate two uh, magnetic fields basically for the price of one and cause each one to uh, create current through induction without affecting the input and uh, I believe uh, that Floyd Sweet started out with something very basic like this before he moved on so uh, this isn't the exact uh, original concept of the experiment of Mr. Preva's because of one thing I made the windings equal and so th this is just uh, I probably should should have done it exactly the way he had it where one winding was slightly smaller than the other to offset uh, offset one from the other and I'll explain that here in a minute why that should probably be done but I wanted to show first what happens with two, two equally sized coils same in inductance and resistance in every other way and it doesn't do very much uh, I'm pretty sure it cancels the magnetic fields out exactly uh, which is not what we want to do because we need the magnetic fields to induce current into other coils or each other so this is just uh, it's just two coils on a transformer basically but they are oppositely wound from each other so this one's wound I forgot but one of them is counterclockwise and the other one's clockwise so the AC is just going through both of them like that and uh, the current of course remains the same but I'm pretty sure the magnetic fields inside of here are canceling out to null so this is pretty much uh, all it does um, I forgot to have this plugged up let me uh, plug that up real fast I unplugged it cuz uh, I got a cat running around here and I don't want to fry the cat so, uh, okay Sorry about that, that should have been plugged in. So this is all it does, I have a load. So it's basically just both coils are connected right here and right here in parallel essentially with just a load in between, and that's the light bulb, going through a meter. And let's go ahead, just on AC. So, uh, as you can see, we're just using 197 milliamps of AC at 13.40 volts of AC across our light bulb. Now, <clears throat> for the input, simply got the wall, a wall plug plugged into the wall um, on the uh, primary side of this transformer. It's a voltage step down transformer down the two. Uh, you got two settings here. You got a 12 volt and a 24 volt. I'm using the 
the smaller voltage I believe 12 volts as an AC 12 volts AC feeding into the uh, primary of our transformer so uh, it's not doing very much right now so uh, I just wanted to document this from the very beginning and uh, so let me explain a little bit of the idea of what is supposed to be occurring in this <clears throat> the idea is I think it's pretty obvious but uh, we're, we're stepping away from the pulse motor because quite frankly there's 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 there is a lot of stuff going on in a simple pulse motor but why mess around with a motional device when we can do a motionless device it's doing the same thing we put power in uh, and we're also going to try this with uh, impulses over here using a uh, timer and a simple MOSFET we're going to uh, basically just be pulsing it and we're going to try that too but we're going to try to get closer to uh, what was originally shown in the experiment uh, that we're going to be replicating where one winding is smaller than the other and that's so that we create an offset or a phase difference and, um, and get an actual uh, induction of magnetic field from, from one to the other so the idea is this is just like a, a simple pulse motor and generator and so it's, that's the benefit we get out of this and so we put power in okay and this creates let's say a north pole in the primary uh, this induces a voltage into the secondary okay now here's the thing when we pull current off onto a load over there this creates its own opposing magnetic field of a north pole that fights the original north pole that induced it and this is the Linz's law in effect and uh, this is what keeps it at or below 100 percent efficiency but it is over unity because we have two magnetic fields but they're fighting each other if we could separate those two to where they don't fight each other which of course causes more current to be pulled out from the power source and then makes the output drop and then it's under a hundred percent we have two magnetic fields that if we separated those from fighting each other and then caused each one to induce a current separately from each other then we can get twice the amount of current at least current and most likely power without affecting the input at all and so something like this should have an automatic 200 percent efficiency and it's very evident that there are indeed two magnetic fields and so physicists and, and electronics uh, guys uh, are going to say well those two are inseparable but the thing is there's two of them and because there's two of them there's the possibility of separating them and then once you separated them and they're not fighting each other anymore from the secondary to the primary then the input will not be affected at all and you should have double the output for the price of one so one going in two coming out separate them that's the idea and so in order to try to separate them we're gonna uh, in our next uh, video documentation we're going to lower one of these so the magnetic fields aren't equally opposing each other anymore and we're going to cause one to actually induce a current and see if we can get two different currents somewhere in the system and uh, try to get some power measurements so uh, as far as power measurements so far right now we're using an AC sine wave so next we'll, uh, we'll lower one of these windings down to cause the offset um, using the sine wave um, power supply and then we'll try it with DC pulses next after that 
Um, also, these meters. Now, these meters can read the AC perfectly and accurately because, uh, after all, they do have AC settings, but uh, they're more meant for the wall of 60 hertz frequency. So this is what this is running at, a 60 hertz frequency. And the meters do read that just fine and accurately. But anything else beyond that, like pulse DC from a, a 555 timer chip, it's not going to read that. Well, it will because it's DC. And if it's fast enough, they'll read that as DC just fine. You'll see it as just a, a regular DC flow. Um, but so for right now, we're re using the meters to read AC from our AC wall power stepped down uh, sine wave at 60 hertz. All right, so uh, this is the beginning of our documentation of um, replicating uh, Mr. Preva's experiment. Uh, also, these concepts of uh, opposing magnetic fields through oppositely, uh, oppositely wound coils is uh, something that High IQ is working on as well. So we'll go from here, and the next video should be uh, of one where we have less windings on one. We might have to try to tune it with a capacitor and we'll go from there. All right, I'll see you on the next video. Have a good one. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and uh, please like and comment as usual if you have any. And uh, see you on the next video.